Hello everyone, the title of this video is Use Multiple Concurrent Threads to Increase Scraping Speed. As you can see, we're going to look at what is a thread. We'll look at the official Python example of using concurrent futures and we will look at a scraper API Python example. So let's get started. Um, here we go. So we're on the scraperapi.com website quick start guide python requests beautiful soup scraper in the url i'll put this down below in the description scraper api is designed to allow you to increase your scraping from a couple of hundred pages per day to million of millions of pages per day even simply by changing your plan to have a higher concurrent thread limit the more concurrent threads you have the more requests you can have active in parallel and the faster you can scrape so in a second, we will look at the official Python example. If you're new to volume scraping, it can sometimes be tricky to set up your code to maximize the number of concurrent threads you have available in your plan. So let's look at what is a thread. A thread is a separate flow of execution. This means your program will have two things happening at once or more. It doesn't have to be two. But for most Python 3 implementations, the different threads do not actually execute at the same time. They merely appear to. It's tempting to think of threading as having two or more different processes running on your program, each one doing an independent task at the same time. That's almost right. The threads may be running on different processes, but they will be only running at one time. Getting multiple tasks running simultaneously requires a non-standard implementation of Python, which some of you in some of your code in a different language or multiprocessing, which comes with extra overhead. Because of the way CPython implementation works, threading may not speed up all tasks. This is due to implement interactions with the GIL that essentially limit one Python thread to run at one time. Tasks that spend much of their time waiting for external events are generally good candidates for threading. Here we go. And um, oh, the light's just catching the camera. Sorry about that. Let me just move over. Problems that require heavy CPU computation, spend little time waiting for external events, might not run faster at all. So, if you're running a standard Python implementation, writing only in Python and have a CPU band problem, you should check out multiprocessing module instead. So, with that being said, we're not always going to be needing to use threads, but when you want to do something such as web scraping, it's useful. So, let's look at concurrent.futures. So, this is used in the scraper API example. And here is the Python example from the Python documentation for 3.10.5. The concurrent futures module provides a high level interface for asynchronously calling call, asynchronously executing callables. If you're used to JavaScript, you'll know the um, async. You'll be f more than familiar with using async functions. The asynchronous execution can be performed with threads using thread pool executor and that's what we're going to be looking at here. So in this example they're using um, thread pool executor max workers equals one. You can also use um, to submit schedules to callable to be executed and returns a future object representing the execution of the callable. So, so you're creating multiple objects basically. Um, when you use map, the iterables are collected immediately rather than lazily. The func is executed asynchronously and several calls to func may be made concurrently. So concurrent is the keyword of today's video. <laughs> um, so you've got submit, map, shut down. And then we've got this example here. Okay. And you can read the rest of this. So this is, um, this is the example here, which I started with. 
Excuse me, it's very early in the morning, so I need coffee. Um, what we've got here is five different URLs, one which won't work because it's some dash made dash up domain. Um, what we'll do is we'll set max workers to five. I've just added in a couple of more error checks in my code and let's have a look at it in VS Code. So this one, so what we've got here is basically the same example you just saw on the Python site. Five URLs, got a function, def load underscore URL, it loads the URL, and then it returns what it reads with the, the con object. Um, you're creating the con object on the line above using URL lib dot request dot URL open. You could use requests and we'll use that in the next example. I've imported socket as well up here. That's for checking for a socket error. And I've also imported HTTP error because I'm also checking for a 403 error uh, for a forbidden page. So let's just scroll down a bit. And let's make this Zen mode. Is it Zen? Yeah. Okay, so this is where the magic happens. Um, you've got context there with concurrent.futures.threadpool executor, which is what we saw in the documentation. Uh, max workers equals five. Then uh, what I've done is variable future to URL and then executor.submit. So this uses executor.submit. The other version we'll look at uses executor.map. Those are the two choices there were on the, as you saw in the documentation. Um, so when I run this, it will try and get the data from future.result, the future object. Um, if it fails, it'll either be forbidden or we'll get a socket error because I've already tested it. So let's run it and I'll just demonstrate. And there you see, we've got error creating socket, which we got from this line, which I've put in. I put this line in extra to what was on the Python example. And um, you see, if we look, let's just, um, if I make that go cross move panel to left and scroll up, you can see the order in which they were returned is not the same as the order in which they were requested. So you can see um, some URL made up domain was actually the first one to be returned. Uh, the second one to be returned was Fox News. The third one was Wall Street Journal, which is forbidden. And then we had CNN which was actually the second one to be requested, was actually the fourth one to be returned. And then BBC was the fourth one to be requested. Well, in the URL list, actually, we know that it ran concurrently. So that's the benefit of concurrently. You can go off and ask for five at once, and then you just get the replies as and when. So that's the Python example. And I'll put the code on GitHub, link in description. This is pretty much the same as what we saw on the python.org documentation. I've just added in these two lines here to handle the socket and the HTTP error. And um, yeah, we here we are using um, with concurrent.futures.threadpool executor, we are using executor.submit. The alternative to that, which is what um, yeah, there we go. That's that's the actual executor of the class for the executor object. If you're interested, um, let me just call up my other file, which was QTS underscore one, and um, let's make this end mode as well. And then we'll run this, and I'll just talk you through it. So what we've got here is actually the scraper API example. 
And um, again, I've just updated it. They weren't using F strings. Um, I think the example's maybe a couple of years old. Uh, the other thing I've also done is I've put my API key in a .env file, which is just to hide it from <laughs> hide it from everyone watching YouTube, and also to so that I can put the .env in the git ignore file, so it, my .env file doesn't get uploaded to GitHub when I put it there, and also it's just. Um, keeps the code nice and secure. So this is just um, a parsing function which goes off and gets, well, what it actually does is it goes off and uses requests.get rather than URL lib, um, checks for a response, 200, 404, etc. Um, and then if we, here it's just saying if we get a connection error then just set the response equal to nothing to quotes. Um, so this is the different bit to what I showed you in the previous code. So the previous code was the Python documentation. This code is the Scraper API. So Scraper API is a company which provides a very good proxy. So I'll leave a link to that in the description with a discount code. 10% uh, off if you use my Dr. Pi discount code URL. Um, and it didn't cost you any more, but it just helps the channel so that I can make these amazing videos. So without further ado, let's just say, let's just finish this off with concurrent.futures.threadpool executor. So same as before, max workers equals number threads. We set it as a constant in this bit of code and it's set to five again. And then executor.map. So the map function, with a map function, you take an iterable such as a list and then for each thing in the list, it gets passed to the function, which is in this case, scrape URL. So scrape URL is this main function here. Um, so for everything in the list, which you've only got two things, <laughs> that's gonna get passed to, everything in the list of URLs is gonna get passed. And it's because it's using the executor.map, it's gonna be concurrent. Okay, so let's run it. And we've got an error. Scrape URL is not defined. Well, it's defined because it's up there. <laughs> Let me just close this and run it again. It's working this time. That is my one bugbear with um, VS Code. Sometimes you've got a background. You need to kill terminal, I think. Kill terminal to kill. This has taken quite a while. Here we go. So we have the response. And um, so it's getting the two pages from quotes to scrape. And yeah, Mark Twain, Thomas Edison, blah, blah, blah. So it's used Beautiful Soup to pass out all of the text from the Quotes to Scrape uh, website. So there we go. Hopefully this has at least brought to your attention that you can use concurrency. Um, and whether you use Scrape or API or you write your own code, um, you use or you import concurrent.futures concurrent.futures there we go and if you want if you want to do it with scraper api then for all, by all means sign up with my discount link and off you go you're off to the races so um, two ways of doing it executor.map and executor.submit as per the official documentation um, and if you want any links, if you want to know about the error handling code, Stack Overflow is your place to go. You've got different examples of handling the errors. If you want to see my code, then it's on rgg.h, rgg.h even, Python, and then Scraper API examples. The Python, I'll put this in the description as well, the link on the python.org site to this Again, this was the one which uses 
um, where was it? Executor.submit rather than executor.map. As per the documentation, you've got a choice of submit or map. So I've actually shown you both here. So if you want to copy my code, you can have a choice of map or submit. Um, and yeah, if you want to read about setting in a .env file, come here. Setting .env file to store sensitive info without pushing to GitHub. So last thing you want to be doing is paying for an API and um, exposing your API key on GitHub or anywhere else. And uh, there we go. So thanks for watching and thumbs up, comment, etc. If you want to see any more examples of Scraper API, it's all on their site. This was the example for Python requests and beautiful soup. If you go back to the guides. Um, you've got developer guides, which is under documentation, and there are examples for you see five thousand free API credits. Even if you don't, even if you uh, don't, even if you haven't paid, you get five thousand free. Um, yes, yeah, so you've got Node, Python, Selenium, Node.js. Scrapey and Beautiful Soups. So there's examples for all of those. And um, yeah, I'd strongly, even if you're not planning on signing or subscribing or becoming a customer straight away, it's good to just familiarize with the API, which you get full use of. If you sign up and get your 5,000 free API credits, which last, um, I think it's 30 days. So easy, even a monkey could do it. That's a challenge. <laughs> Prove them wrong. <laughs> Thank you. Bye.